All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, if you've been following the track Evo 8 build, you know we got stalling issues on this car now. I've done a video on replacing the exhaust cam sensor, if you guys want to check that out. And I've also done a video on replacing the crankshaft position sensor down there. So I'll leave a link up there if you guys want to check that out. But today, I'm going to show you guys how to replace the idle control solenoid, which is on the throttle body. So it's underneath this um, piping here. So I'm going to take the piping off and I'm probably going to end up taking the uh, front strut brace off just to give me a bit more access in that area there. So it looks like it's only held on by, I think, three screws. So let's go. Right, so I'm gonna undo this vacuum hose for the blow off valve. Just loosen that clamp, loosen probably this clamp, and I'll try and wriggle it out so we can gain access to that area there. All right, guys. So we took off the uh, front strut brace, the top intercooler pipe. So now we got plenty of space. And there's the idle control solenoid right there. So I'm gonna take out these uh, screws here. You can use the uh, Phillips, but I think they're gonna strip because yeah, they're gonna probably be really, really tight because they haven't been off for ages. So um, I believe it's a seven mil socket. So just put it on there. And then, um, yeah, and then we'll, we'll take out the solenoid and we'll see if there's any um, carbon buildup that's stopping the plunger from moving back and forth. All right guys, so the auto control solenoid is out and that's what it looks like. I'll come into the um, sun here. So that's what it looks like. Just checking the seal. So I'll just quickly go grab the new one and then um, we'll put it side by side. Okay guys, so here's the old one and that's the new one. Doesn't seem to be any different so all the numbers in that are still all the same the new one came with this new protector that sat on top here so that was yeah because considering these are 450 dollars you know so i'm gonna go ahead and put the old one in and i'm gonna see if the plunger moves um in and out when i switch the ignition on and off i think that's a good way of testing it All right guys, so I hope you guys saw in the video, um, the plunger didn't seem to move back and forth. So it made all the uh, right noises and stuff, but yeah. Then this thing's supposed to move back and forth, so it's a little bit crusty. Put that here. Um, so we'll just take out the old seal, which is that. So there's the seal. 
Um, I'm just gonna get a light and I'm gonna have a look to see if there's anything in here. So it's not too bad. And the throttle body doesn't doesn't look too bad also. Alright, so I got my light. Doesn't look too bad in there, look at that. Not too bad at all. No, not that much carbon, so. Right, so before I go um, putting the new sensor in and the new seal, I'm just gonna clean around the area with this um, auto spec carby and throttle body cleaner. I find this stuff works really, really good. So I'm just gonna spray some on a rag and I'm gonna open up the butterfly, the throttle with the, and I'm just gonna clean with a, uh, butterfly is and then I'll just clean around here just so that's a nice seal All right, now that we uh, just gave the throttle body a bit of a wipe down, we just put the new sensor in. Be careful, um, make sure the surface is all clean. So where this seal um, sits, just make sure that it's all clean. So you don't pinch the seal. Okay. Right, so the new idle control solenoid is in. They're only little tiny screws, so I reckon just like finger tight, you know, because they're only seven mil. You don't want to be doing it too tight and end up cracking here on the sensor. And then when this plunger works, it's just gonna, it's not gonna seal properly. You'll have an air leak. It'll, it'll just end up bending all the time. So yeah, not too tight. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now, um, put the intercooler pipe back, and then I'm going to start it, and hopefully it fixes the problem. Alright guys, so the top intercooler piping is on. I'm not going to bother putting the strut brace on. Uh, I just want to get the thing started. So, uh, I haven't found too much information on what you have to do when you put a new idle solenoid in. So, what I've previously done in the past with previous cars is um, just switch the ignition on for 30 seconds and then switch it off for 30 seconds. Switch it on for 30 seconds, the ignition, and then um, start it. So, I'm going to go with that. So, hopefully this fixes the problem. Of course, yeah, I'm all about out of ideas, eh? Okay, so the moment of truth. Gonna start it. sure if it's the tune but it pops for around about um, a minute or two and then it comes right so I'm not too sure if I've got to get the tune checked out
Mine's on um, 98 at the moment, not E85. So, I've got plenty of fuel pressure. Right, so I'm just going to let that run for a couple of minutes. It's on 98 right now, it's not on E85. It makes that popping sound for about a minute or two and then it comes right. So I'm not too sure if it's the tune. I might have to get the tune looked at. So who knows? So we'll just let it idle for a little bit and see how we go. We're sitting right now at about 1300 RPM. It's been about two minutes. And now that popping sound's gone, so. So that popping sound only happens for about a minute or two. So I'm not too sure if it's my cold start issue. See? So that's what it should sound like. I'm not too sure if it's uh, spark plugs, coils. I might change the spark plugs, but the spark plugs, they've only done about, you know, uh, 15,000 Ks, hardly drive it. minutes this is the time when it actually stores it's getting up to operating temperature so we'll see what happens hopefully it doesn't store please Alright guys, no good. The car just thawed. Ah, super bummed. So, the fans are all still on. It's not good. Yeah, I don't know, eh? Hey. Alright guys, no good. The car just stored. It just dies. So, I'm gonna have to get probably... Uh, it only started playing up after I gave it about um, 15 litres of fuel. So I might um, drop that fuel, give it a fresh batch, but I don't know, because I got the Haltech, you know? Oh, what the hell take with the bloody f flex sensor? So you think it would adjust even if I had shit fuel? <sighs> As you saw, the Evo is, yeah, it's still stalling. So I'm um, not too sure we go from here. I've done the three main things that um, play up on the 4G63s. I've replaced the exhaust cam sensor, the crank sensor. And now I just did the idle solenoid and the car's still um, stalling after about five minutes. I've checked all the hoses. I don't have a boost leak. I don't have a vacuum leak. You know, the day they started uh, having this problem, I did put 15 litres of 98 in from the local servo. But, you know, I got my flex um, fuel sensor there. So you'd think that it would, you know, compensate for shit fuel. So, yeah. Not too sure where we go from here. You know, do we start replacing the core packs, you know, with the spark plugs? You just can't keep throwing money into this thing, you know? Um, chasing your tail. Um, 
I'm thinking that I may need someone's laptop to uh, access the Howtech so we can see what's going on and check the parameters and stuff like that and see if it is, um, if, if the tune does need adjusting, so. Yeah, I've got no, I checked all the vacuum houses, there's, there's no leaks, you know, it just drops out. Is it a relay? Is it an igniter somewhere, module? Like, is it this relay? Is there a module somewhere that we're missing? Um, I'm really thinking that, yeah, I need someone to hook up the ECU and check to see if um, there's anything wrong in the parameters or anything like that. I reckon that's the go, eh? You know, because, fuck, if I replace these coil packs, you know, I'm 500 bucks right there, man. The, the only reason why I replaced the sensors was, yeah, because they're, they were, they were the most common things, you know, but the way that this thing goes, where it just dies out of nowhere, it's definitely like an electrical or signal fault, so. All right, guys, so uh, that's going to be it for this video. I'm going to go inside and rest, um, de-stress, I guess, with a couple of beers, so, um, yeah, we'll... I'll just keep uh, mucking around with things and if I need to update you guys then I'll do a quick video so, but that's just where the track area was at at the moment I'm fixing to get someone um, to hook up their laptop and just have a quick look at the parameters you know I might even I might even dump the fuel and put a fresh batch in to see if that helps and maybe I've got contaminated fuel I might take the fuel pump housing out in a couple of weeks and um, have a quick look but yeah I don't know yeah, this is definitely um, a hard pill to swallow, considering we just, yeah, just put a bit of money into or buying all the sensors and stuff, and it still hasn't fixed the problem. So I'm kind of a little bit demotivated, but um, you guys watching um, kind of helps me keep going, try to fix this thing. So keep watching, um, tell all your friends, like and subscribe, because yeah, if you guys keep watching, then I'll just keep doing, trying to fix this. Uh, keep doing mods to the Evo 8, keep me going, so, yeah.